Welcome back to America Needs Fatima's series on the angels. Millions of creatures exist that are far more perfect than man. While their abilities are extraordinary, even more sublime is their mission. Come with me as I explore the mysteries surrounding God's most faithful ministers, the admirable creatures we call the angels. The story of Christ's birth is a familiar one to us all. Our Lady and St. Joseph journey to Bethlehem during the first Advent, where the child Jesus is born on the first Christmas. But have you stopped to consider the finer details of the story? For example, how did the Holy Family keep safe? And upon his birth, did the divine infant receive the adoration befitting a king? Finally, you will have the answers, along with the beautiful Advent and Christmas meditation for this year and to tuck away for future years. This knowledge is nothing new. It is not very well known today. Our narrative is drawn from the visionary Venerable Sister Maria de Agra's 17th century text, Mystical City of God, Volume 2, The Incarnation. Today's story opens and closes with the angels. Near the time the Holy Family left their home in Nazareth to travel to Bethlehem, God entrusted 10,000 guardian angels with a special mission to serve the Holy Virgin Mary during the first Advent and Christmas. And so, besides the 1,000 angels that ordinarily surround Our Lady, God added 9,000 to that number. What heavenly attention to detail! This stands as a testament to the magnificence and importance of the events surrounding the birth of Christ. God's care for His chosen instruments, especially Our Lady, is meticulous and grand. However, the Holy Family's journey to Bethlehem was fraught with many challenges. They carried nothing with them, and to everyone they passed, they looked like the poorest of the poor. But in reality, they were rich because they brought with them the treasure of heaven in Our Lady's womb. Plus, they were under the constant protection of the angelic host. The Virgin Mary and St. Joseph walked amid an entourage of angels who watched over them with the same reverence as the most devoted servants. And only Our Lady could see them constantly in human form. They shone like the sun. And besides the 10,000 angels, many other angels descended from heaven with messages for Our Lady from God the Father. Isn't this incredible story of the Catholic faith fascinating? If only more true stories like these were being told. This is the exact reason why we feature stories like this so often in Crusade Magazine. Crusade Magazine is our full-color, fully Catholic magazine that we have been printing for over 35 years. We fill Crusade Magazine with inspiring stories of the saints, spiritual guides, and wisdom from the Bible and Catholic news and opinions on what's happening in the world around us. Crusade Magazine is one of the gifts you will receive when you sign up to become a Child of Mary member. As you sign up to become a Child of Mary, you will receive a subscription to Crusade Magazine, a beautiful metal lapel pin featuring the image of the pilgrim statue of Our Lady, and your name and intentions will be sent immediately to a local priest who will offer a full Catholic Mass for you every morning, 365 days a year. We have a special intention for our liturgy today, for our Mass. America needs Fatima's children of Mary. And especially uh, we offer this divine liturgy for Lucy Cosgrove, for Matthew Long, for Mary Wyman, for Lisa. Click the link in the description below to sign up today. Okay, back to the Holy Family. As the Holy Family walked the long, cold road of roughly 90 miles to Bethlehem, the city of Joseph's ancestors, the angels kept well occupied. They composed new songs in honor of Our Lord and Our Lady. Sometimes Our Lady and St. Joseph experienced no darkness of night during the journey because the holy angels spread out rays of light when their travel extended beyond nightfall. Upon reaching Bethlehem, our Lady and St. Joseph were rejected by men and made their way to the cave of Bethlehem. The angels immediately set about helping them clean and sanctify the cave. 
Then, when the time came, our Lord was miraculously born through the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our Lady entered into the beatific vision, was transfigured in light, much like she was later at Fatima, and brought forth our Lord like light from glass. St. Michael and St. Gabriel were present to receive the infant Jesus as he was delivered, and they presented him to Our Lady, who received him from the arms of the archangels. Holding him in her arms, Our Lady served as the altar and the sanctuary, where the 10,000 angels adored in visible human forms, their creator incarnate. In this moment, the angels' roles as divine messengers came to the fore. They were dispatched to various places, announcing the birth of the Savior to holy people. St. Michael the Archangel announced the happy news to the holy patriarchs in limbo, particularly to Saints Joachim and Anne, the parents of Our Lady. Other angels were sent to St. Elizabeth and St. John the Baptist, Zachary, Simeon, and the prophetess and others. But the first who received the news were the shepherds in the field, considered lowly in society. The angels sang to them, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men of good will. After this song, so new to the world, the angels disappeared, but the humble shepherds were enlightened and longed to witness with their own eyes the most high mystery of which they had been informed. And that's our story. Our Lady's 10,000 angelic entourage during the Advent and the birth of Christ is a testament to the mysterious, grand, and intricate plans of God. It reveals the profound roles of angels as guardians, messengers, and celebrants of the divine mysteries. Its message reminds us that God's salvation is for all, regardless of their worldly status. The same message resonated centuries later when Our Lady appeared at Fatima to beg for the conversion of all sinners so that they would be saved from hell and experience the profound joy of salvation that Christ brought to the world. Many souls go to hell, she said, because there is no one to sacrifice and pray for them. And finally, our story encourages us to be attentive to the angelic messages in our lives and to respond with the same fervor as the shepherds. In this, we find the wisdom of angels in guiding us toward the Savior, as they did for the shepherds and the Holy Family, and ultimately, toward eternal life. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and return for the next one as I discover and share another incredible angelic story. Every new Child of Mary member gets a subscription to Crusade Magazine as one of their gifts when they join. Become a Child of Mary today by clicking right here on your screen. As soon as you join, we will start sending this beautiful and spiritual Catholic magazine straight to your front door. Thank you, and may God bless you.